Hello everyone and welcome to Compassion Immersion Coaching. My name is Zach and to, in today's episode we are going to be looking at the three core challenging emotions and six ways to heal them. Okay, so to start off with, let's have a look at what the three core challenging emotions are that I'm referring to here. So before we actually get into that, let's look at the work of Paul Ekman, a renowned psychologist who proposed six basic emotions, which were happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, anger, and surprise. Now, of course, looking at those, we've got happiness and surprise, which are kind of more not so much challenging emotions I would say that leaves the remaining four of sadness fear disgust and anger now as I understand it from what I understand and through my own learnings over the past nine years now in the spheres of emotional healing that really there's more so just three challenging emotions and those are anger sadness and fear now where paul ekman had brought in the other one there discussed i would actually say that that could be related or put into the category of anger because what is that when you're feeling that disgust you're you're kind of like revolted by something you're kind of like almost angry about it like existing right so yeah i would actually say that disgust could fall under anger so we've got anger, we know what that is. That's like states of rage and resentment and like bitterness. And then we've got sadness, which relates to depression and general upset and just generally feeling lonely or vulnerable or in despair. And then we've got fear, which many know as anxiety as well. Anxiety is perhaps considered a more kind of subtle aspect of fear uh, but that's still anxiety is still within the remit of fear so we've got those three anger sadness and fear and all of those kind of sub emotions that can come under you know the whole entire sphere of human emotions that fall into those three categories so we've got this anger we've got this sadness we've got this fear now what all what do all three of these have in common What's one kind of unifying factor that could be underlying all of these? As I understand it, it is lack. That sense of lack. And what is that sense of lack? It's like that sense of disconnect. It's like feeling like you're not a part of something. It feels like the universe isn't there with you. You're not there with you. There's something lacking. It's like when you're angry about something, you're 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 feeling lack towards that thing that you perhaps don't have perhaps you feel jealous which is which comes under anger and you feel like you're lacking that thing that you're jealous of or in sadness usually when when we're sad we are we're sometimes perhaps grieving in some kind of way or we're depressed we just feel down and we feel low and again, that's usually because we're lacking something. And then fear as well. Now, how does fear relate to lack? It's a good question. So when I'm fearful of something, say I'm fearful of being attacked, that's also coming from a place of lack because that fear of being attacked, that potential perpetrator of that attack towards me, it's a feeling of not having safety in that way I'm lacking safety in that moment so in that sense anger sadness and fear it makes sense that they all can relate back to the idea of lack so those are the three core human emotions the three core challenging human emotions shall I say so what do we actually want to do about these how are we actually going to work with this so say if we're feeling a great amount of anger, we're feeling a lot of rage or bitterness towards ourselves or something or someone, or we're feeling sad and we're feeling depressed, or we're feeling fear and anxiety over something, 
it could be like a job coming up or like it could be some kind of issue in a relationship or it could be the fear of losing something. Now, what I've come to understand over the years is that really, as it's lack that we're dealing with, what we need to do is positively reinforce against that lack. We need to like work on bringing something in that's actually going to assist with that feeling of lack and actually kind of help it along and transmute it into a feeling of fullness in that sense and into a feeling of connection ultimately into a feeling of love and so how do we do that how do we bring love into this anger how do we bring love into this sadness how do we bring love into this fear how do we bring love into this lack well there's many ways to do it but really also as well Let's start with number one, and a big one. This is a big one. This is kind of like the baseline. So feel it to heal it. How do we heal the free, core, challenging human emotions? At the very basic level, the first thing we need is to be aware of the emotion. That's number one. We need to be aware of the emotion. And number two, we need to feel the emotion. Now, there is a third part to that as well, which is bringing love into that emotion, which will help it even more. But at a very basic level, the absolute minimum we need to do in order to progress and to heal and to transmute these emotions is just to acknowledge them, be aware of them and feel them out. Don't numb them down with alcohol. Don't numb them down with food. Don't distract ourselves by watching a movie or having sex or, or, or using drugs or anything like that. We just need to acknowledge them and feel them out to their end. We just need to sit with them for as long as they need. This isn't about you dictating how long you think that emotion sh should need. Well, it is in a way. You'll know intuitively when that emotion has been satisfied for you feeling it out to completion. But what I'm getting at there is you don't want to be cutting it short. You don't want to be deciding, right, you're having five minutes, this telling this emotion, right, you're having five minutes of awareness and that's it. And then cutting it off. I remember one story, I think it was of a certain celebrity, I won't say their name, who said that they give themselves one day to grieve and that's it. After then, they're not grieving anymore. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. You know, that's one way of doing it, but you're not really allowing the emotion to go through what it needs to go through if you're going to decide to cut it short if that emotion hasn't fully allowed its if you haven't fully allowed time for that emotion to do what it needs to do so yeah that's number one acknowledge it and feel it to heal it so number two meditation meditation again this really translate in, translates in with number one feel it to heal it so going into a state of meditation, for, for many people it can be incredibly uncomfortable because all of a sudden they notice that they have these thoughts coming up or these emotions that they really don't want to look at. Unless they are on a path and they've been looking into this stuff for a long time, they've been going into their inner world, then those people are going to have a bit of an easier time, of course, when it comes to processing their emotions. But if you're not used to this kind of practice, if you're not used to feeling taking the time to meditate and go within yourself and to get get familiar with your emotional landscape and your feelings then it can be really challenging at first and to that i say i have compassion for you and just just give yourself that time give yourself that compassion and just allow yourself to sit in that emotion in meditation for 10 minutes a day 20 minutes a day just through meditating every day is going to make a big difference. So yeah, when you're, when you're feeling anger, you're feeling sadness or you're feeling fear, one of the best techniques you can use is just to go into a state of meditation and that will, just through your breath, that will allow the emotion to bubble up and to expand inside of yourself so you can feel it. 
so that the, the emotion can be felt fully and so it can expand inside of you. So that's number two, meditation. Number three is a technique called EFT tapping, also known as emotional freedom technique tapping. And what this process is, is essentially, is using our hands to, and what I'm doing here for those of you listening on the podcast, is I'm essentially tapping certain areas of my body. And why is this? Why, did, why can this work? Well, essentially, when we go through a state of trauma, or we have some kind of emotion that, that we experience at some point in our, in our life, and we don't get a chance to fully process it at that time, of when the trauma or incident happens, what will happen usually, or a lot of the times is our emotions will sort of dissociate. An aspect of ourselves will sort of get stuck in a certain part of our body. It can be a chakra center. It can be organs within the body. It can be in the flesh. It can be in the skin. It can be in the bones. It can be in any part of the body, essentially. So by doing this tapping technique and focusing our, our intention upon that area of the body, we can sort of dislodge those emotions from where they're kind of laying dormant. And it can also help to expand. We also breathe as well. And through that breath, we expand through the tapping and the intention and the breath in unison. It will expand that emotion to kind of coerce it out to be to allow it to be expressed and to allow us to unconditionally express it and allow that to happen so that's something worth looking into as well EFT tapping the emotional freedom technique so that was number three now number four is something called the BCR technique now what does BCR stand for BCR stands for breathwork calm and reinforcement so first of all say if i'm really angry about something i've just been triggered i'm like really angry at a particular person i'm very bitter and resentful towards them for what they've just done what i need to do in that moment is take a step out of the situation if i'm still in the situation where i'm triggered just leave the situation and breathe just breathe to allow that emotion to expand in my body. And breathing to allow the emotion to come up and to rise up and for it to be fully acknowledged. And I keep doing that. I keep allowing myself there. Just allow the feeling to come up through my breath. And I keep doing that, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, ideally, because that's going to help relax you rather than breathing through the mouth at all, which will actually kind of stress your nervous system a little bit more. So breathing in and out through the nose. And just keep doing that until you can let all of this, a lot of the emotional energy dissipate. Okay. Until you come to a kind of relative state of calmness. It may sometimes take five, like a minute. It sometimes may be instant. And other times it may take several minutes. Sometimes it can even take half an hour. It's really important to be able to get to that state of calmness through the breath. And then the third part, the R, which stands for reinforcement. This is where we want to be positively reinforcing. We want to positively reinforce against whatever we experienced. And through this, there's so many different ways that you can use positive reinforcement. You could shower yourself with appreciation. You could shower the emotion with appreciation. You could apologize to yourself. You could imagine yourself in the most beautiful, blissful place you could possibly imagine, such as your safe place. It could be like, in, in a field of long grass and you've got people that you care about around you or like your favorite animal. Just visualize that, just visualize that bliss state in your mind, in your mind's eye. 
and just really get into that vibration of that feeling of how that feels. Really kind of embody that emotion of how that feels, of how that perfect place feels. Really get onto the frequency of that version of reality. And that frequency and that vibration, that good feeling, is then going to filter through the whole of your body and it's going to bring you up and it's going to make you feel happier and lighter and more joyful. And through that process of bringing that loving energy, essentially, that positive energy, that positive vibration, that positive frequency, that higher frequency into your body, it's actually going to help to wash that anger down. It's going to help to wash that sadness down. It's going to help to wash that fear down and to cleanse it into peacefulness. So what have we done there? We've breathed the emotion out. Just to recap and summary of the BCR technique, we're breathing that emotion up and to let it expand within us. We keep, and we keep breathing and we keep breathing and we keep feeling and we keep feeling until we get to a state of relative calmness. And then we go into positive reinforcement, which is gonna to help to cleanse that emotion even more. So that's the fourth. That's the BCR technique. Now the fifth, and this is an interesting one, this is a technique that I essentially came up with on my own a few years ago, uh, from the time of recording in 2023. I came up with this one around about 2019, and essentially this one is called the Love Energy Cultivation Technique. So what we're doing here is and I remember specifically this was quite effective at a time when I was depressed. I'd just gone through a relationship breakup and I was very sad. So yes, this was around about 2019 and I'd just gone through a relationship breakup. I was extremely sad and I was depressed for about three days, I remember. And I wasn't doing much about it. I was just like, oh, I'll just feel it out. I'll feel it out. Even though I knew I had this tool, this love energy cultivation technique at my disposal. And so I was like, right, this is it. I need to, I need to make it happen. I don't want to feel this way anymore. And so essentially what I did was I repeated the words, I love you over and over again. And I'd hold my hand on my chest, like I'm currently doing both of my hands on my chest. And I would intend with willful intention, with soulful intention, I would say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Over and over again. And directing that intention to my chest, to my heart, to my solar plexus, or to any area of the body where I was actually feeling this way. And through this process, I actually found that saying I love you, that, that kind of vibrate, that kind of frequency and that intention was so high up there that the emotion actually ended up bubbling up to the surface even more and even quicker than me just sitting and feeling it out. And I remember for about half an hour, I was there just saying I love you, I'm really meaning it and kind of nurturing myself as, at the same time, hugging myself and just like really like meaning it, I love you, I, lo I love you. And what I noticed was in my heart that this kind of feeling of love started to, started to grow. At first it was like a little spark, but it began to like grow bigger and bigger and warmer and brighter in my heart space. And by the end of the 30 minutes, I'd gone through a lot of tears. I had been weeping quite a lot. I was moving this emotion a lot. I could feel it like bubbling up. At one point I even saw my inner child, like a visualization of my inner child. And I remember just feeling amazing after that 30 minutes. I felt incredible. That depression like was gone. It was just completely gone. I still had more work to do over the coming days, but the depression had cleared for the most part. I got through so many layers of it. It was extremely powerful. So that was number five, the love energy cultivation technique. 
It is powerful, but I would also like to state number six, the process of self-directed compassion. Now, this is an interesting one because I thought that when I had that love energy cultivation technique that I mentioned as number five, when I had that and I was using that, I thought I had found the best thing ever. I thought I had found the most effective thing, the most efficient modality that I could possibly find that worked for me. And then, and then came across this process of self-directed compassion, which when I tried it, I was blown away at how powerful it was. I was really shocked and impressed. And I just knew that this was what I wanted to use in my own healing processes and for my clients as well. And so what is self-directed compassion? Essentially, what this is, is instead of using an I love you affirmation, it's apologizing to the emotion. It's saying, I'm sorry you feel this way. I'm sorry you're sad. I'm so sorry you're alone. I'm sorry they caused you this pain. I'm so sorry you caused this pain to you. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but if you can experiment with that, that idea of self-directed compassion in the form of an apology to, an apology to the emotion, just experience that for yourself. Test it a bit. Try it out. Try it in some different ways and different angles. There's nothing quite like it in my experience. Nothing quite as effective. That works for most people I have found that I have practiced with and practice on, shall I say, and helped to clear many of their emotions and their traumas from their younger years and past years very effective. So yes, essentially apologizing to the emotion from different angles. Not just projecting love at it, trying to convince it out of its current state by saying I love you, <laughs> which does work as well, but by apologizing to it, you're offering love to it, but you're not just offering love, you're offering, offering compassion, you're offering an apology. And it's that frequency of compassion that, in my mind, cannot be matched in terms of its effectiveness at healing those free, core, challenging human emotions of anger, sadness, and fear, and ultimately, lack. So, yes, I invite you to try any of these. So that was number six, self-directed compassion. And just to recap, we have number one, feel it to heal it. Acknowledge the emotion and feel it to heal it. And then number two, meditation, sit in silence and just feel the emotion bubble up through your breath. And then number three, EFT tapping, the emotional freedom technique using a tapping method. I would suggest you go and look for resources on that if it's something you want to try out. And then number four, the BCR technique, which stands for breathwork, calm, and positive reinforcement. Very effective technique using a lot of visualization. And then the fifth, love energy, culti love energy cultivation technique, essentially using the affirmation of I love you repeatedly over and over again to conjure and cultivate real heartfelt energy that will cleanse your emotions. And then number six, self-directed compassion. So instead of saying, I love you to the emotions, you apologize to the emotions. Incredibly effective, incredibly powerful for most people. So I hope you found value in this video today, this podcast talk today, and I wish you all a very good week ahead. Are you grappling with a persistent feeling of depression, anxiety, anger, or perhaps a traumatic experience linked to rejection, abuse, or abandonment? Maybe you're burdened with a sense of heaviness in your thoughts and emotions. If you're contending with any of these types of challenges or something else that you feel you'd really like to alter about your emotional state right now, 
For a limited time, I'm offering a special free 30-minute compassion immersion strategy session to help you navigate the remainder of this year and beyond as the most emotionally unburdened version of yourself. During the strategy session, we will construct a lucid vision for your optimal well-being, emotional stability, and emotional freedom. We will reveal concealed obstacles that may be thwarting your capability to heal yourself. You'll conclude the session feeling revived, energized, and motivated to dissolve deeper parts of your karmic baggage so you can look forward to the upward spiraling benefits of doing so. If you'd like to take advantage of this special session, head on over to my website, that's zachhater.com, Z-A-C-H-H-A-Y-T-E-R.com, and fill out the form and I'll get back to you within the next 24 to 48 hours to schedule your one-on-one compassion immersion strategy session. Head on over there now and claim your session today.